Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and this is not going to be a heavily edited episode. This is literally just kind of, not really a rant, but just random thoughts on two Netflix cartoons that I've seen recently. One which is uh, Masters of the Universe, which I actually had to go back and make sure it wasn't called He-Man Masters of the Universe, because I thought, wow, that would have been an unfortunate title considering the events of the show. So it's just called Masters of the Universe Revelation, which is set in the He-Man Universe and picks up kind of where the original cartoon left off. And it was made by Kevin Smith, and I have some thoughts on that, so we're going to talk about that today. And then also the trilogy. If you remember uh, the trilogy of Transformers, uh, War for Cybertron, if you remember back when that show first started, I was putting up reviews for each episode, and I got about three episodes in, and I was like, I'm done. I can't review this anymore. <laughs> and don't, don't worry, those of you out there who are um, wanting to know my thoughts on Trisse, uh, I will have that finale go up uh, very soon, the final two episodes. Um, I'll have, I actually recorded that like a couple weeks ago, and I thought I deleted it, but I actually found the audio. So I will you know, get back to editing that, and I'll post that up probably in the next week or so. Uh, so I haven't given up on, on, on Tresse. Um, but, uh, but for this, we're going to talk about the War for Cybertron uh, trilogy just real briefly. I'm not going to talk too long about this stuff. And then also He-Man. Uh, so let's start with He-Man because I feel like that one is uh, way more controversial than I, than I thought. I, uh, I had heard like some people liked it, some people didn't, but I was kind of like, yeah, that's typical. Um, that's always happens. Uh, but then like I talked to my mom and brother and they were like, hey, we really liked the show. Like my mom was like, yeah, I knew He-Man from when you were a kid. Like, when I was growing up, I guess I liked He-Man a little bit before I got into Transformers. And then after Transformers, it was just all uphill from there. Because <laughs> I guess I kind of liked He-Man, but I wasn't, like, a huge fan. I don't remember any of that. Uh, He-Man came out the same year I was born, in 1982. So I'm guessing I didn't get into it a couple years later. But by that point, Transformers had already started. And I'm sure I was way more into trucks and robots, uh, for sure. Um, so not, not to dog He-Man. But I just want to give you some perspective that I'm not a huge He-Man fan. Uh, at all um and then you know you know post aneurysm i don't remember anything about he-man i know he-man skeletor and she-ra and that's it i didn't know who man of arms was i didn't know who um uh, merman was or moss man or um orca or uh, any of those characters tila I, I didn't know about any of them i just knew about uh, the castle that looks like a skull uh which is cast gray skull uh and i knew about um you know skeletor he-man and she-ra and that's it that's my knowledge of of he-man um so watching the show i was like okay this is interesting and in, in from a as someone who's written stuff and has edited stuff i can see where maybe kevin smith was going with this uh so before we yeah i i don't know about i didn't know about all the kevin smith controversy i didn't know that a couple months ago uh some youtuber had like um kind of heard from a source of theirs that the show wasn't going to focus on he-man i mean the show's not called he-man it's called masters of the universe so I, I i guess if you're thinking of it that way that kind of makes sense a little bit that they want to focus on the masters of the universe and in this story it's not just he-man but it's everyone coming together in some way um and they all play their parts um so there will be some spoilers here we're going to get into some spoilers for he-man so if you haven't seen it yet definitely you know uh come back later and and watch this afterwards but um just you know try to summarize my thoughts i guess like i didn't know about all that and then i watched the show and then after i watched the show i went online to see some other people's reviews and i didn't realize like that people there's things in this show that people are vehemently against um and it was funny because i i liked that i watched the show without that in mind uh because i feel like that kind of either extreme negativity or extreme positivity i don't like going into stuff with that and it's really hard in this day and age on the internet to not carry that stuff you get exposed to it on the internet but i'm thankfully for me i stay away from a lot of that stuff and i then i start looking for it after the fact so the show i definitely have issues with the show from a writing standpoint from a creative standpoint and even as someone who doesn't know that much about he-man there were just some things structurally and character wise i didn't really i didn't like then there were some stuff that i did like uh, and i thought the positives kind of outweigh the negatives but I understand there are people out there that when they see a negative, especially when they think it's some kind of agenda-driven negative, uh, they will just hate everything about, you know, a show or a movie because of one element. And I don't. Like, uh, yes, I don't like Tila as a character. That was actually going to be one of my critiques. 
And then I went online and I saw that everyone hated, or at least everyone who didn't like the show hated Tila because she's, you know, um, a tough woman character who, you know, is, you know, uh, pushing the men out to, you know, to be the strong woman. And she has powers that are just kind of, she just has, you know, she hasn't earned them or anything like that and, and that kind of stuff. And it's, it, th that's the problem with the show is that it's building off of an old show, which many people may remember or not remember correctly. I remember Transformers, the G1 show, really well because I rewatched them, uh, you know, like eight years ago and then again like five years ago and then again like two years ago. I've watched all the series from the original G1 to Headmasters into the Super God stuff and, and then so on and so forth, you know, like and, and to Beast Wars, Beast Machines, all that stuff. Um, so I like every a couple years I go on a binge and watch all the Transformers stuff just to remind myself what those cartoons were actually like which was dumb, goofy shit, <laughs> you know? They weren't, like, profound in a lot of ways. There were there was a couple moments from time to time, not to take any credit away from the show. They had a couple episodes here and there where you're like, wow, this is pretty clever for a show. Um, but uh, but ultimately, they were goofy shows to sell toys, right? Uh, which is fine. I like toys, too. Uh, but but He-Man, you know, I think sometimes people have these rose-colored glasses on of what the old shows were like, and they don't really go back and ever rewatch them. And, uh, and that's true in some cases, and I think it's not true in other cases. So if someone says they're a hardcore fan and they know the show by heart, I'm, I'm going to believe them because I don't. I don't know any of that stuff. But it's building – this show has to build off of that old mythology. And because of that, some of the stuff like Tila, you don't really see her earn some of the stuff that's given to her or presented to her in this show because possibly some of it happened in the original cartoon and I guess some of it also might have happened between the original cartoon and the start of this show, which is stuff none of us saw because this show jumps ahead, I guess, a couple of years or whatever in the timeline. So to me, I'm like, okay, so Tila, she has this attitude. She's kind of, uh, she's whiny in, in a way. She, I guess because she's an orphan, she has this, uh, and, and got brought in to, by, to this world by man at arms. Um, she maybe has this outlook where, um, you know, pe people keeping secrets from her makes her feel even more alone and isolated. So if I really want to dig a little deeper, I can understand maybe where the motiva uh, motivation and stuff for this character comes from. But ultimately I found Tila to be a very unlikable character in the show because of this grudge she has on her shoulders for her friend who had had to, in a lot of ways, keep a secret from her and maybe didn't want to and was a, and was willing to share it at some point. He just didn't know he was about to meet his end because obviously in the first episode, He-Man and Skeletor seemingly die. Um, He-Man definitely dies because he goes to the afterlife, uh, Paternia. Um, but, uh, but Skeletor, you know, we find out what happens to him. But for me, like, I think Tila just didn't work as a character because... I don't know how someone who has that kind of chip on their shoulder um, it can be gifted this power um, that, that she seems to have when she meets the, the Skeletor knockoff guy, the glow guy, and, and she's like in hell, and she like combines the sword or grabs one of the swords. He's like, what are you? And she's like, I'm your worst nightmare. I'm like, but she, where does she earn that from? Like, And with her attitude to this whole thing, it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, uh, she was not, in my opinion, as likable as her friend to the mechanic um the, that character i liked a lot more and i thought her wanting to be part of an adventure and save eternia that made more sense because she was willing to seemingly put her whatever baggage she comes with she put it aside to join this fight whereas tila just kept dwelling on her baggage and that to me didn't make her a very heroic or likable character okay she's capable of fighting great but you need to be more than just that uh to to be uh you know some kind of chosen one or whatever she's going to end up being i think she's going to be another he-man type uh possibly she's a man at arms right now but or was and then turned away from it but um but eva lynn i liked in the show um i liked uh, orca that little magic thing uh that was a really neat story i mean yeah i, I think some people said in their reviews like oh if you if you you know have a a, a very shallow depth of emotions that you, you know that that the the fate that Orca me, uh, meets probably will m make you tear up or something. I didn't tear up watching this show, but I was kind of like, oh, that was kind of sweet. The moment he had with Evil Lynn, and he made her laugh. He made this evil woman who worked with Skeletor actually crack a joke and smile. 
And uh, I kind of like that. I don't know. I thought it was kind of sweet. And uh, But all the men die in this show. <laughs> you have Orca, who I guess is a, a guy. I mean, he's a orc creature thing. So you, I guess maybe he doesn't have a gender. I don't know. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm misgendering him. Uh, the robot, it, Roboto, is just a man-at-arms, like, robot clone. But I liked his uh, death. I thought it was kind of sweet where he realized, okay, I'm, I'm, I feel something. So tell man-at-arms he did a good job by making me. Man-at-arms I thought was cool. He showed up to save them um, when they were fighting Merman in the flashback. And then he showed up later again when he was told to go to Grayskull and he did not. He decided not to. And he stayed behind to save his family. Um, I liked Man-at-arms. I thought he was cool. Uh, I thought he was a cool character. Uh, and, so, and I don't know much about him. So I was really in intrigued in his story he saved the old man he grabbed the water made sure it didn't spill so he could help orca all that stuff i was like yeah hey he's a pretty cool character i like him and then the big finale with he-man um you know where i'm pretty sure he-man's not dead he got stabbed in the stomach just like skeletor did in the first episode and skeletor turned out to live so i think he was just an eye for an eye thing like i'm gonna go for the gut but it didn't kill Skeletor, technically, so I don't think it's going to kill Adam either. So f oh, f overall, like I think a lot of people get mad because they see one thing in a show that maybe they feel is agenda-driven or, um, or maybe it's just something they genuinely don't like, and they just dwell on that one thing, and they don't look at the other stuff in the series, um, or they write it off as stupid or, or you know, whatever because they don't like that one thing. I agree about the Tila stuff. I didn't like her as a character. But I still liked a lot of the other elements in the show. I liked a lot of the other characters in the show. Uh, but a lot of the ones that die are men. <laughs> she, there's no women making their you know, big sacrifice move uh, at all in the show. So uh, that's a little unfair, I feel. Uh, but but still, I, I did like the show overall. Like uh, I, I sure I have some complaints about it, some of the writing and the, you know, the pacing of some of it. But I found myself kind of intrigued at the concept and the world of He-Man. I was like hey, this is pretty neat. Like, this is actually a neat world, and I can see why it has such a, a strong fan base. So um, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you've seen He-Man, I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, you know, positive or negative. Um, you know, it, I always love hearing other people's ideas, and I did go out and search for other reviews, and I was blown away by the <laughs> negativity. I was like, wow. Um, but then also to touch on the drama real quick with Kevin Smith. Um, yeah, like that guy is not doing himself any favors by actively going out and talking shit about people who are, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like sometimes people go, I'm just giving feedback, bro. Why are you being so mad? But it's how people give feedback that you're like, well, you're being a dick about it uh, because because you're you're pointing out you know stuff that you don't like and you're tying it to agendas that you don't agree with and stuff like that. But it's like can't it, it's so funny. I always hear one side go, we need diverse stories. We need you know we, you need to look past this to you know to tell stories or whatever. And it's like yeah, but then they don't look past the one thing they don't like at the rest of the story. And it it's, works on both sides. Everyone just a big whiny bitch. <laughs> like I can't take it anymore. Uh, so if you're out there and, and you just want to like, He-Man has been ruined for you, then I don't know. Go fucking become a fan of anything else then. Uh, go stand outside and stare at the moon one night. Like appreciate life or something. Like, uh, you know, it's not that bad. We there's a, There was a cool He-Man show, I think in the early 2000s, that was pretty decent. Go watch that and, you know, wipe your tears away, you big pussy. Uh, so uh, so anyway, I don't know. But I I, the, I understand some of the criticism, the ones who are being constructive. Um, but people just hating on it to hate on it and people just loving it to love on it. It's like, you know, people are like, Tila's the greatest character ever. I'm like, no, I don't think so. And then there are people like, Tila's the worst character ever. I'm like, well, I don't like the character. But she was a gateway to other characters that I did like, so... I mean, you know, there's some, she did some good. She made me like other characters. So, uh, so that's my thoughts on He-Man. And then as far as Transformers go, like I, this I'm going to be really brief on. Um, I hate this show. <laughs> I hate this Transformers show so much. It's so awful. Uh, it's a bunch of mopey, stupid, selfish asshole robots uh, that are, that, I mean, in season one, you're like, you're, they're taking the AllSpark off the planet and you're like, why that keeps your planet alive and then later in season three now they're like oh it kept our planet alive we got to bring it back to our planet and it's like oh my god like no shit idiot uh so 
The whole show has been awful. It's fanfic written by the worst type of fans, I feel. Uh, I, and here's the thing. It's like, I'm not going to cry or lose sleep over it. There's a lot of other Transformer cartoons that are awesome that I can go watch and I will rewatch on the on the binges that I do. Um, but I will never rewatch this show. Uh, this show uh, this show doesn't ruin Transformers. It doesn't ruin my childhood or anything. I'm not going to be that dramatic like other people are about He-Man. Uh, but I just don't like it. Like, there, there's no characters in it that I like liked uh they they oh my god they're the writing is so bad it's they take the first g1 season of transformers and they kind of tweaked a few things in it to make season one of this show war for cybertron and they do it poorly uh then in season two they're like all right we're gonna start you know building out the movie universe with unicron and these other characters galvatron and stuff and skylink and then we're gonna um in season three we're gonna bring in the, the maximals and the predacons and we're gonna tie that all in and we're gonna make this, this time travel thing where we gotta go back and, and reset the timeline and make like a kelvin timeline for you star trek fans out there which is basically like the jj abrams uh, universe and stuff so it's like one of those type of stories but they wanted to get in all their fan favorites but then none of the characters really feel or act like any of the characters they're supposed to be um they're just situational like all right we need someone to be a dick in this scene okay we'll make optimus primal a dick why he, he's a great leader why would you like i know sometimes you have to have character flaws but why is he just being a dick for no reason uh i think he oh he thinks he's nemesis prime okay but he's not nemesis prime he's not purple like so there's just like things like that where you're just like they need things to happen so they make them happen and it's it's awful um and then the whole third season like i just finished it it's i so that's why i had to make this video it's it's so bad i don't like this show at all uh everyone's mopey everyone's selfish uh then at the end when they finally realize what to do to do the right thing which was right in front of their face almost the whole time which was hey let's put our differences aside because a war is just going to leave all of us dead and of course they're not just megatron stubborn in season one uh but prime is too uh, and it just gets to a point where you're like, who's the hero here, really? Uh, no one does anything really heroic in this show to an extent. I mean, there's a couple sacrifices like they do in He-Man and stuff. And, and I don't know, one or two of them's done okay. But ultimately, it's like it, they just were like, huh, everyone's fodder. We're going to follow the movie formula and just make certain characters fodder. And so we can bring in these other characters and, and then they're not going to act like their characters and and i know the argument's going to be yeah but they're a different timeline version now and and you know the answers are coming to them at different times and blah 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 and it's who cares like i like who cares i honestly i just this transformer show was bad i just uh, like from a story standpoint a character standpoint the animation i'm not very thrilled about either um it just comes across as bad fanfic like really bad fanfic um and i think i said something like uh, you know in the in the in talented hands the idea that the transformers come to the revelation that optimus and megatron's war against each other is a bad thing in the in talented hands that's a good story to tell but unfortunately there were no talented hands in my opinion on this show so then you just have a bad you have a, a good concept handled by just a bunch of amateurs um and and i'm sorry like if anyone who worked on this show I, i'm sure you worked really hard on it um but i think you worked really hard in all the wrong areas and you and all the areas that needed your attention and help and focus you paid no attention to in my opinion um so yeah i, I for he-man if i was rating it out of five i'd give it like a three or maybe three and a half out of five it's not the worst show I've ever seen, <laughs> but again, I'm not a huge He-Man fan. I am a huge Transformer fan, uh, so maybe I can understand some of those of you out there who like, you know, don't like the He-Man stuff. Uh, but in Transformers, like I give that whole trilogy a one out of five. Um, it is my least favorite Transformer cartoon. Now, I've never watched Rescue Bots, and I think there was a one called Transformers Go. I've never watched those two shows, but I don't even need to see a single episode to imagine that they're probably better than this show. And and again, that's just my opinion. It's like you don't have to agree with it. But um, but Transformers, one out of five. Easy one out of five. I mean, I'm being generous with a one out of five. He-Man, I'll, I'll go with a three. Like, I didn't hate it. I have a lot of criticisms of it. But the criticism I have didn't dampen the enjoyment of the stuff. You know, the stuff I did like, it didn't ruin it. Um, so... I give it some credit there and i'm interested to see uh, the next part that kevin smith does I, now i will say kevin smith like i said he's not doing himself any favors by you know telling people to deal with it or whatever he says like it's like dude whatever um 
I don't know. It, it, that's not a good thing. But then also people who are like, well, I'm manly and I want my things to be manly. I want my cartoons to be manly. <laughs> and then you tell them to deal with it and then they start crying. Like, how dare you tell me to deal with it? It's like, wait, I thought you were manly. Like, what's the deal here? Okay, whatever. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> you do you, internet. Uh, but for me, I didn't hate He-Man. I thought it was pretty enjoyable. But there is things it needs to do better and hopefully the second part does those better i certainly want to see more he-man and i hope i'm pretty sure he's not dead i mean it's a cartoon set in the he-man universe i doubt he's they already killed him in episode one like he's back now he'll be wounded he'll probably be out for an episode or two but i think he'll nut up and get his sword and, and do his thing i'm sure in no time um you know but uh but for transformers though like Optimus, nobody nutted up ever. Everyone just like slap fighting each other because the animation's so bad. Um, it was boring and uh, and no, not a lot of cool transformations and and, uh, and not a lot of transformations at the at times that would make sense to transform. Uh, they just kind of if they're they're like oh, I'm running. I think I re uh, reviewed that in the first episode. I was like, why are they running? Why doesn't he just turn into a car and drive away faster? Um, yeah, the show's bad. It, it just makes every wrong choice, and uh, I didn't like it at all. So uh, so if you agree or disagree with me, whatever it is, let me know down in the comments. I just want to make this ranty video and talk for like 20, 25 minutes to, just to give you my thoughts on this sh on these two shows uh, because uh, some people were asking me about it. And, uh, and yeah, I just was like, well, I'm not going to put any effort into it. I'll just ramble for, you know, 10 or 20 minutes, you know, total. So, uh, so here we are 20 minutes in and there's my ramble. So let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. If you want to talk more details about anything of either of these shows, do it down in the comments and I'll join you down there and we'll continue the conversation as always in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff and wipe the tears from your eyes, pussy. See you later. Peace.